Okay kids, it's DK here with Mr. V Amps and we're going to do an amp build project. We're going to build the Ted Weber kit called the Maggie. It's kind of like a champ but with some fancy tone switching and a 6L6 for more power and two output speakers. They sent us, well there's my layout diagram. There's a slightly older schematic. It looks like there's some updates on the layout diagram, slight updates. Um, got a chassis, got some output transformer, power transformer, resistors and capacitators, switches and jacks and whatnot. We got our pilot light and wires and knobs and a fuse and stuff and then we got those are bolts for the power or for the output transformer they were actually taped to the output transformers little box we've got tube sockets we've got a power cord got a brass plate and an eyelet board okay so we actually have the grounding lug stud thing on this one like we did on the other amp from some time ago. Okay, so that's going to be for the speaker out. Now, on the diagram I think they might show two speaker outs, I'm not 100% sure, but that's a speaker out. I don't think we need to per se. Maybe we do. If we do, we'll just drill a hole, right? That's how we roll. What about for the switch? I don't think they gave me a place for the switch. There might be a little bit of drilling here because this was originally probably a chassis for a 5... Uh, was it 5F2A or something? And then there's an overlay plate here that uh, goes in place there with the new controls. They might have a little bit of drilling here. But let's just start with the eyelet board and uh, see what happens. Okay, so this isn't going to be super duper rocket surgery. That's my tag board. There's a board that goes under it as an insulator. The holes line up. My job is to make that look like that with the help of the things in this. Fair enough. And thanks to the magic of video editing. Ta-da! Yeah, I know. You guys wanted to see some hot, sexy soldering action, I'm sure, right? So, anyway, things that go to ground are the naked wires. Got three naked wires. And uh, there are some linkages under there. See, like, where those two caps tie together? And the values of these caps are actually the ones on the schematic. So, 20, 16... This 16 has two dimples in it, so to find the negative, you gotta trust the arrows over to eight. Eight. They went with a 500 ohm resistor, which again, 470 here, but there's a 500 on the schematic. 25 is what it says. This is actually a 22 microfarad. That's a 22 microfarad, even though it says 25. Um, 22 and 25 behave close enough. 0.47, which is physically massive, 0.022s, 100k ohm resistors. You must have been scraping the bottle of the bar bottom of the barrel because we got 100k's there and 100k there, and they don't match. We got one flame proof, and we got two old vintage carbon style. Those old vintage carbons will make it sound better, right? I'm sure it will. 220 over there, and we have a 220 that uh, you know it's supposed to uh, span across that uh, 20 microfarad cap 
the resistor itself, the leads weren't long enough, so I jumped it across the cap. And then the 10K resistor, which is listed 2 watts there, is actually listed 5 watts on the schematic, so they give us a 5 watt, and then we get a 2 watt 56K. So, yeah, it's using the schematic values. Again, the 22 microfarad uh, is close enough to the 25. Probably ain't going to hear much difference. If we need more base, then we'll change them, but I don't think so. Um, the couple of the junction wires like we have coming out of here, there, this actually junctions up to over here under the board. See, I did all the under the under the board junctions. And just flip her over. Oops, I got a couple of leads I forgot to trim. I gotta trim this and I gotta trim that. But the junctions that go underneath here, like see these junctions are those junctions. Yeah. And then the that snaky wire is that snaky wire. And then that one loop is that dark one right there. Alright. Okay. Okay, remember how I told you this was like a 5F2A or something originally? And of course the controls and everything on the top have all been remedied by this plastic plate that overlays and gives the new controls and that kind of stuff. At the bottom, rectifier, power cord, rectifier tube, power tube, um, switch, but no fit, preamp tube, speaker jacks, hmm, okay, switch goes between the power tube and the preamp tube, and we got to make a little pinhole for the um, terminal strip and we got to add these so we got to do a little surgery here there now it's more better but instead of putting those two side by side I elected to put them top and bottom there's our switch thing it's white it's widened for the switch I still got to do a little pinhole for the um, bracket for the terminal strip. Okay, so I put the tube sockets on. Um, the octals have bear traps and the nine pin has a shield. Um, I don't want to put much more stuff on here because I got to get this board. Hello. This is very reflective. I have to get that board in there and if I start putting the switches and the other gubbins down here then it's going to block my path because I've already got an input jack and a switch there and then I got the lamp there and that's so I you know so it holds this on top but I don't want to put any more stuff up there because I'm gonna impede my ability but before I put the board in I gotta put the output transformer on because it's gonna bolt on behind here okay remember me telling you this was a descendant of 5F2A right see the transformer would normally go that way but it's too big. This output transformer is big because it's a single-ended 6L6. So the bolt holes that work for it are there and there and it does line up. So somebody was thinking there but I did have to widen the holes so the bolts fit. But that's okay. And then you gotta put in the rubber washers there. Um, these two wires are gonna go in there and then the other ones that we're actually going to use are going to go in there. Maybe all of them will just go in there and I'll bound up the ones that aren't being used. Okay, so to get the circuit board installed, you're going to use one, two, you see next to the yellow capacitor, they're sheet metal screws. And there are corresponding holes on the chassis. Um, they're a little tricky to get started into the hole so maybe start them but don't forget your backer board remember your circuit board has a black you know fiber backer board so when you put it down it doesn't short to the chassis because if you forget that then when you turn the power on something bad's gonna happen and you're gonna feel really silly 
Okay, so you're looking at this upside down. That's the switch. And I've connected it to the two various capacitors there. Um, and I did connect the grounds. So the naked wires there and then that, that capacitor, that's a tone cap. But um, let me actually show you what you're looking at. Since you can't really solder to stainless steel, that brass plate is supplied so you can solder your grounds to it. And then between your jacks and your switches and everything that puts the, the brass plate is well connected to the chassis so that's your ground so what you're looking at is you're looking at this one right there that's a ground that's this one over here um, and then this one right there is connected to the chassis and then you see this little pigtail right there that goes to the chassis and then this center point of the switch also goes to the chassis um, we do have to ground the one we do have to ground that leg of the volume pot but we can ground that to itself since it's screwed to the glass plate okay um, right and then for the grounds that are over here these and that I'm going to be putting those onto that copper stud over there. We'll get to that. I tried to make the boosty switch here very much akin to the way it was on the picture. So, 10 years from now, if some joker's got to deal with this, I'll at least have something to work with. The point of all of that switch and what it does is it has to do with the bypass caps affiliated with the 12AX7 tube, the first tube there. Um, it's got one and a half megs to ground. The, or I'm sorry, one and a half K to ground. These one megs are just on either side of the switch to make it not pop. So just imagine they're not there because they really don't do anything directly to the circuit. So you have a one and a half K to ground for the uh, bias of the 12AX7 and with no bypass capacitor it's uh, going to have kind of minimal gain and anyway you can snap in a bypass cap you can do the 22 microfarad or 25 microfarad with one direction on the switch which will give you the maximum amount of base and then you have a second one there that's 0.47 so half a microfarad and that'll give you some boost so you basically have from like brightest less bright and beefier so it's kind of like a they they refer to it as the boost switch which is fine but it's a three mode switch that changes out the bypass cap kind of cool okay so I wired up the pots go from there to the middle of the volume pot this leg of the volume pot is grounded, so I grounded it to itself. See with a the little lead there? And then that one goes to the, the cap there that comes off the 12AX7, which of course it's not going anywhere yet because I haven't done the bottom. 500 picofarad capacitor bridges it to the tone capacitor. And leg one of the master volume goes to the middle here there is a blue wire it's running up there where you really can't see it and then there's the 0.047 to ground so essentially you're looking at you're looking at that these two right there I pretty much did that verbatim okay so I started wiring up sockets that brown wire is off the output transformer and that goes to the primary rail of the power supply there, the hottest rail. And then the second rail there goes to the 1K resistor that's hiding around the back of the 6V6 socket. Everything matches the diagram. 12AX7 is wired up as such. I haven't done the filament wire shot. Um, the one wire I have draped over the edge, that is going to go to the um, <coughs> terminal strip for its uh, cathode ground and that also includes a negative feedback loop okay so 
we have the terminal strip, one and a half K resistor to ground. That goes to the cathode of the 112AX7 there. We have the 16 ohm tap, which is the gray wire from the output transformer and the yellow wire, which is the 8 ohm tap. There's also a 4 ohm tap and a 2 ohm tap, so you can use those to your personal preference. I have, this amp is going to have 16 ohms worth of speakers, and I have 16 ohm extension cabinets, so I wired this with the 8 and the 16. So we use 16 for the internal speakers, and 8 for the internal speakers plus an additional extension cabinet if I choose. Um, the negative of the, or the black wire of the output transformer is going to go to the ground of your input jacks. Those are grounded to the chassis. I know they always draw the little ground this line, but it's already grounded because it's cranked down tight to the chassis, as is the one lug there on the terminal screw. So that looks like this. That is a, a pretty tall switch, so I'm glad I saved the filaments for later. Um, so we have the 16 ohm tap on those two, 68K, 1.5K, right there. That wire is a blue wire that's going back to the cathode there. And then the black wire is snaking over, it's hiding in the corner, you can see it back there. And then the signal, which is going to both of those two. Uh, jack simultaneously is coming off the center of the switch. Okay, so next day I am starting to install the power transformer here because I think where we left off we just got all this gubbins over here for the uh, switch for the output transformer, right? We finished the output transformer so now we're working on the power transformer. Um, green yellow stripe and red yellow stripe are going to the ground lug there and then the yellow pair which is represented with a dotted black line there goes to two and eight and the red pair goes to four and six and then the high voltage line is coming off of eight that would be my <clears throat> red cloth wrapped wire. So I have the yellow um, on 2 and 8, red on 4 and 6, and the high voltage coming off of 8 there. Now we still have a lot more wires here. Um, the in this case, the blue, the blue wire, and the red-white wires will not be utilized. So we're gonna shorten them and tie them off. Okay, continuing wiring on the transformer. Um, the power cord, the one I got has blue, brown, and green, which is an international. It's not the black, white, green like we're used to, and actually, it's. The green one is yellow with a green stripe. See that one down to ground? That's the earth ground. Um, and then the blue one, which it looks like they designated that one as the common, that tested as the hot wire. So I switched the positions of blue and brown. Um, so I have the blue going to the fuse, and I put a little bit of shrink wrap there, and then that's going to the switch. And I know some people are like, oh, you got to put the switch before the fuse. Blah, 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 blah. But yeah, that, that's because that makes you happy. And whatever. And then the red, white, and the uh, blue wire that we aren't using there, I snip them shorter, tape them off, and have folded them into the cavity there. So we're good there. Now we have to do the filaments. And. Uh, that's going to be our green wires. And then we have to uh, still do the input. I never actually wired up the input jack there. We're almost done. Okay, so filaments of the green pair, <clears throat> they go up to the light, and then they go to 
the filament pins on the 6L6 which are 7 and 2 and then they go to the filament pins on the 12AX7 which are 9 and 5 and 4 tied together. Now, those are probably longer than are ideal but I gotta clear that big switch and yes I used bigger fatter wire because I felt like it. It's not required, I felt like it. Um, keeping your filament wire short and away from everything else is kind of what's recommended but again I had to clear a big fat switch. If we have an issue, we have an issue. If we don't have an issue, then we don't have an issue. So we're gonna try it like that. Now I have to hook up the input. Okay, so for the input jack, you got a one Amiga ohm resistor there going from tip to ground. And you're using shielded wire. Let's look at the picture. You got a one mega ohm going from ground to tip, right? And then your shielded cable, your signal, which is the inner connector, is gonna go to tip and then the outer shield is going to go to the ground, which the switch and the ground are tied together, so it doesn't really matter which one you put it on. So then when you get down to this end, you got to peel that shielding back a little bit, um, tape it off or whatever, and then put the tip on that 68K resistor and put that down to the pin number 2. And there it is. You can see it on the end of the black wire. There's just a teeny bit of resistor showing. I've got that thing really, really close, so we've got the wire shielding all the way across. So I think that actually does it. At this point, we're probably ready to kick the tires and light the fires. Oh, yeah, and the 4-ohm and the 2-ohm taps for the power transformer. I just uh, insulated them and tied them back here. Nobody's going to see them inside the amp. Okay, so for all you tube snobs out there, get all excited because I got all old tubes in here. They're like newish old stock. Westinghouse, RCA, and GE. Ooh. Okay. So the amp is on, but the Variac is at doodly squat for voltage. So we're just going to start creeping it up. Make sure nothing explodes. Started at, uh, I don't know, 40 volts. We got a little bit of a pilot light. That's about all it has enough gusto to glow. Usually these things don't actually start making any sound until they get to about 75 volts. I'm going to have the volume turned down. This volume pot is very stiff. I might need to put a little bit of oil in it. That might be too loud. I don't know. Oh, am I already getting sound? So we're running at, I don't know, 70 volts, 60, 70 volts. There's 80 volts. I got sound and then that should be the lowest boost on the preamp yeah okay so forward that's so we have like middle bright and super boost. So yeah, we do have the three voices. I do get a different sound. Let's see if our tone knob works. This pot is stiff. I can't tell if our tone works because I can't turn it easily enough. Maybe I should put a knob on it, eh? Okay, so I put knobs on it. Um, everything here works. So... The tone knob works, the tone boost switch thing works. Um, the hum level is 
very low so the chassis is good at this point um, need to wire the speakers in the cabinet for 16 ohms okay and then my speakers are wired in series they're both 8 ohm speakers but wired in series you get 16 ohms which that means I can use a 16 ohm extension cabinet and run the amp at 8 ohms or I can just run it at 16 ohms with the speaker. Okay, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else who hasn't decided yet, I present to you the cow box. Alright, so yes, it's a cow box. And this was my doing. I decided it had to look like a cow. And we have our controls. We have a tone knob, which works fine. We have a volume. And we have our boosty switch here, which is currently in the no boost position. We have a 6L6, which is a RCA made in West Germany. We have a GE 5Y3 rectum fire and a Westinghouse 12AX7. Because everybody knows that old tubes automatically sound better just because reasons. And this is the internet and anybody who disagrees is wrong. Uh, if you guys were hoping for advanced troubleshooting today, you didn't get any because I didn't really make any mistakes that I didn't catch in the process of making them. Let's give this a listen. Okay, so today I'm setting out to make all the purists angry. We built a twisted, messed up variant of a 50s style Fender amp, made it something else, made it look like a cow. And now we're going to play one of these Gibsons that the purists can't stand because it's 2015 model and it has robot tuners and can be single coil or humbucking. So we're in the no boost position with single coil pickups. Both of them are on. Make the bridge pick up a humbucker. I'll make the neck pick up a humbucker too. this amp and we're probably blowing the camera to smithereens but that's just tough um, so I'm gonna put the boost circuit where it puts the 0.047 or I'm sorry not 0 .0, 0.47 so a half a microfarad cap on the cathode of the preamp tube so that should give us a bit more bass and a bit more gusto and it did and again I didn't add any volume so that's really kind of bright it's getting crunchier the guitar itself has a boost circuit so I can just overdrive it microfarad cap across the preamp and that's going to give us the most boost possible. Yep. Or did I have the switch backwards? I forgot to label it. Let me see. Which was 
more boost. No, that's correct. That's the 22 because you can hear there's more bass comes in, which again, don't know if the stupid camera can hear it. But uh, we'll go we'll go full humbucker on the bridge and just overdrive the crap out of it. turned up to two and a half so there's a uh, big gain and it's quite loud the 10 inch and 8 inch speakers uh, want the 10 inch is a 20 watt Alnico and the 8 inch is a 15 watt Alnico and they're obviously very efficient because there's a lot of there's a lot of power here a lot of volume and we're not really pushing a lot so again out of a 1 to 12 scale, we're at about, I would say, 2 and 3 quarters. Our tone knob, which has some nice variants, I mean, I'll just give you the range, I guess. We'll go to single coil here, so let's give you an open D chord. That's with the tone at the bottom. Just personal preference. Again, I don't know if this is coming through worth the crap on the camera, but uh, yeah, this is this is cool. I already I already like this because it's loud, easily loud. It breaks up fairly easily. Sounds good when it breaks up. So even though it's loud, it's not like deafening hurts your ears loud. This is just a fun. This is a fun amp, and I think I am going to have a lot of fun with it. So. Anyway, the only thing to do is just to play it a little bit longer, give it a little bit of a final inspection, and put a Mr. V Amps logo on it, and then it's officially done. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a good day.